Are you ready to change the trajectory of your business and see massive improvements? Each week, we'll share strategies and practices to generate sustained results and long-lasting success in your organization. Welcome to the Innovation Junkies Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Innovation Junkies Podcast. I'm uh, blah, blah, blah. My name is Jeff Standridge. <laughs> and this is Jeff Amrine. Glad to be back. What are we you know, going to cover today, Jeff? Uh, you know what? We can't always be polished. Sometimes, you know, we just step on ourselves. It's good being a rough diamond, huh? <laughs> it's good being a rough diamond. That's exactly right. Hey, we're going to talk a little bit about this concept of peer-to-peer coaching and uh, advisory networks or peer-to-peer networking groups. And and I know you've had a lot of experience with those. And so I'd like to maybe start with you sharing a little bit about your experience in that regard. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So you know, there's, there's a number of these sorts of groups that have been out there for a period of years, but I'll, I'll paint a little bit of picture of my own experience. One of the things you realize as a leader, whether you're, you're an entrepreneurial leader or whether you're an executive leader in an organization, is a lot of times you feel like you're alone and there's no one that you can talk to that's going through what you're going through at exactly that instant in time. And I, I've found over the course of the last 15 years it has been immensely helpful to meet once a month in a structured way. Sometimes they're called mastermind groups and there's other brands that are out there with people that are at a similar stage in life. They're leading organizations. They've got a similar mix of problems or issues they're working through. You get together in a in a, a, a structured and also confidential environment and you have the ability to bounce ideas off of people, to learn some things new as a group and to build bonds with other people that are going through a very similar experience as you. I found it immensely valuable for a couple of reasons. One is the learning and also the venting that you get to do in that safe sort of setting. Uh, but maybe even more importantly, the connections you make and the things that you learn from your peers who have, even though they're similar experiences, different domain knowledge, et cetera. It's been really good for me. Yeah. And, and let's be clear and let's differentiate, right? This is not a BNI group or a, right. or a, or a, a referral group or, a, you know, in our local uh, chamber, they have what they call the leads group, which uh, actually they call it the pipeline group now. And it's, and it's a great, I just spoke with that group this week and it, that's a great forum for building your network that you can help provide referrals to other people uh, or they can provide them back to you. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about peer-to-peer advisory, right? Right. That's right. And it's it is, it's advisory. It's confidential conversations. It's uh, sort of collective problem solving. As an example, typically in most of these, and there's many of them out there, you can come into the setting with a, a really intractable problem. Sometimes you'll do a setup of the problem a few days before. You'll send information out to the group. And then you spend time in the group working through that issue. And the kind of insights you get from other executive level folks and and the objectivity you get, because a lot of times as leaders, we're a little too close to the problem ourselves, can be tremendously valuable. It's just really, really good and encouraging kind of a sounding board for sure. Yeah. And and as you mentioned, having the right structure and having the right group members in there and recognizing that it's a it's formalized confidentiality. I mean, literally assigning a, a, a non-disclosure agreement uh, and confidentiality agreement, um, but then having a process to go through in order to facilitate the right conversations. You know, many times these peer to peer advisory networks um stand in the place of a high price consultant. And what we have found is that there are there is a, a, a particular segment of the industry that maybe can't afford the uh, the monthly retainer or the annual coaching or, or consulting contract that might come with a uh, with a strategic growth system full implementation. And they want to figure out how to do it somewhat themselves, but with the help of other people who are trying to figure it out themselves and a trained consultant and facilitator. And that's where our peer-to-peer uh, advisory groups come into play, which we call the Strategic Growth Forum. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and the key the key point there is this is just not a, intended to be sort of a semi-organized or loose BS session where you talk about anything. That facilitator, make sure that you've got a solid agenda there's specific time allocations. You're being fair when you do a go around to each participant that they're getting equal time, uh, that there's good listening skills on the part of everyone. People are allowed to get a word in and whatnot. I mean, that facilitator 
plays a huge role in the success of the group and and the the benefit that the individual members get from it. Yeah, so they they actually receive some training as well, the group members, in terms of how to behave, so to speak, uh, not not just how to behave in a in a in a strategic growth forum, but also how to add value back to your fellow members when they're the ones perhaps in the hot seat, uh, sharing a particular problem and brainstorming the solution of that the solutioning of that problem and what have you. Yeah, and as an example of that, one one technique that's that's oftentimes used is someone presents their issue or their problem they want to work through. And after you, you, the first round, everyone is asking questions to make sure that they understand the nature of the problem. So they're not passing judgment. They're not saying, well, in my 30 years of experience, I would do this. They're really asking questions in kind of a Socratic fashion to understand what's the true nature of the problem. And sometimes it helps the person bringing the problem really clarify in their own mind. Is that the problem or is it the problem behind the problem? Then the next round is more of, insights and and inputs that can be more directive and more clarity. But if you do it in that kind of a disciplined fashion, it's good for the group members. They're getting something out of it. They're learning uh, vicariously, and they're also learning really to be good coaches on their own accord. Uh, and, and also as the person with the problem, you're getting really structured feedback rather than just a random set of thoughts. And And then you process that feedback and you say, okay, based upon everything I've heard, here are the three things I think I need to do going out of here. And then guess what? Next month, I'm going to report on, did I do those things and how did it go? Yeah, precisely. That's the key thing is it can't be great, lots of luck and and never any feedback. As members, you you start to become a little bit vested in that that your your peers' success and you want to hear back what they do and how did it turn out. Yeah. One of the things that we have found that is important is to level the playing field with everyone and give give everyone a common language and a common framework. And so each year, our strategic growth forums start with a strategic growth system retreat where we go away uh, and, and they are invited to bring in some of their team members, senior team members, three or four, to actually flesh out the creation of a strategic growth plan along with their long-term targets, their short-term goals, their quarterly priorities, what have you. And so everyone has the same dialogue and the same lingo and the same language so that when they are experiencing challenges throughout the year that they're bringing to the peer-to-peer group or the strategic growth forum, they're not having to educate everyone else around the table as to what they're experiencing and why. Everyone else has a similar plan for their own business and and so they understand some of those challenges. And so that that tends to also not only remove an, or, or reduce the amount of time that's required to explain my situation, but it also accelerates the speed with which we can get to some hard and fast solutions. Yeah. You've been in a couple of groups, uh, some for like years, right? 15 years. Absolutely. 15 years. What are some of the biggest breakthroughs you've seen in that group? If you may, if you have any anecdotes you could share. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, several of them. When I first joined the very first group that I was part of, I was going through an issue as a C-level senior leader uh, in a scalable venture where there were real cultural issues at the top. There was a lot of negative discourse and toxicity between the executive leadership team. And that group uh, really helped me process what was going to be required for my, my team to be successful and and how, you know, what the, the possibilities were for moving forward in a constructive way. It would have been real easy to just embrace that toxicity, toxicity and become tribal. But ultimately, what it resulted in was figuring out how to do a lift out of the group that I had in my geography and align that to another group, essentially uh, an exit and acquisition. And I never would have gotten to that frame of mind. I probably would have been too invested on trying to fix a group that I wasn't going to be able to fix. And it resulted in a successful exit and everybody went on their way. I mean, it was one of those things where I would have continued to fight the cultural misalignment probably at if an item if I hadn't had a sounding board to talk to. Yeah. Um that's that's an important point. You know, one one of the things that I have seen through leadership roundtables, strategic growth forum, peer-to-peer networking groups and what have you is sometimes the most unlikely person 
will create an insight for the most unlikely person. And, uh, you know, having folks from multiple industries, usually non-competitive, but uh, multiple industries. And when you have an executive of a software firm, CEO of a software firm, ask a really basic question of someone with an insurance group and watch the light bulb come on, on the, on over the head of the insurance group executive and, and him say, I, I never, ever thought of that. <laughs> I've never even thought of that before. Yeah, it's cliche, but that but that uh, that, that sort of lateral or, or out of box thinking that isn't burdened by the domain knowledge or the subject matter expertise or that curse of knowledge that people in the same industry segment have sometimes can inject some creativity in the ways of looking at things. It's very helpful. And we've seen that happen many times in these sorts of settings before where it's like, I never would have thought of that. And it's because that person's coming from a completely different point of view and has different domain knowledge. So if, if you're not in a, a uh, peer-to-peer networking group, uh, at one of the branded ones or one of the local ones, uh, you don't have a mastermind, uh, I would encourage you to, to look in your local area for one of those. Uh, if you don't have one in your local area or you want to learn more about the Strategic Growth Forum, as we've said before on the podcast, uh, everything that we do at Innovation Junkie is about helping leaders and their organizations create sustained strategic growth. Sometimes that means disrupting the status quo and, and, and breaking some things to start. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. It just means putting a good, solid strategic growth plan or strategic growth system in place. So if you're interested in learning about our strategic growth forum, uh, we're, we're focused on producing outcomes like strategic disciplines, uh, financial and operational disciplines, certainly profit and cash growth, innovation, organizational effectiveness, leadership, and then just network building and problem solving coming from that network. Give us a shout. We'd love for you to check it out. Uh, at innovationjunkie.com. You can send us an email and just mention that you want to learn more about the Strategic Growth Forum. What else, Jeff? I think it's great stuff. I think we'll see them all next time. Sounds great. Thank you for joining. This has been another episode of the Innovation Junkies podcast. See you soon. Feedback from listeners like you helps us create outstanding content. So if you like this episode, Be sure to rate us or leave a review. Also, don't forget to subscribe to get the latest growth and innovation strategies. Thanks for tuning in to the Innovation Junkies podcast.